I'm excited for this one. I'm Kyle Schultz. And I'm Jimmy Norp, and we're here to do the MLW version of the Wired Auto Complete interview. What's up, MLW fans? This is Alec Warda, and these are my 10 essential items inspired by GQ. Hey, what's going on, everyone? I'm Tommy Coughlin, and you're watching MLW's edition of First We Feast Hot Ones. It's the show with hot questions and even the hotter wings. Oh, this is the worst. It like hurts. Here we go. Google. All right, Jim, you want to do the honors of the first one, the very top I, one? I would love to rip the first one. All right, rip it off. Is MLW Wiffle Ball professional? I would say we're professional. Maybe semi-professional at least. I'm a professional athlete and I always will be. <laughs> I don't know what else to say, but yeah. Okay, I think that's a good, I think that's a good answer. Where is MLW Wiffle Ball located? Southeast Michigan, Brighton, Michigan to be exact. That's where we started our league. That's where the Meadows is and that's where we host our biggest tournament as well, which is called the Wiffle in the Mitten. Always a lot of fun. How do players join MLW Wiffle Ball? That's a good one for you. It's a great one for me. I mean, like, like Kyle said in the previous question, there's tournaments, and if you get found there, you got a good personality, you're good at Wiffle Ball, you got a good chance of playing in MLW, especially if you're local and around the area, so come out to tourneys for sure. All right, first up, I got my Rubik's Cube. Um, so this one's a little worn out and beaten down. This was the first cube I ever got. Yeah, I'll just solve this, uh, take my mind off of whatever I'm doing, uh, and then I'm back at it. I'll give you guys some TRTL. If you're an experienced cuber, you definitely know this algorithm. Let me cook. It's the final, best one. <laughs> <laughs> This is a custom keyboard, the Keychron Q2. Uh, if I'm gaming, I'm using it. If I'm streaming, I'm using it. Um, I also built this. I soldered the switches and everything like that. I've got two of these. This is the Viper Ultimate. Definitely cannot live without these. Okay, my next essential item are my glasses. Uh, if you ever watch me on Twitch, at twitch.tv backslash MLW uh, you probably see me wear these. They're prescription blue light glasses. Helps me sleep better, um, you know, and just, just gives me less eye strain so I, can, so I can remain focused doing what I'm doing. And they're clear, so you might not even be able to tell that I have them on. No, you can, but yeah, they're very cool, very helpful. Definitely love these. And today we're joined by Drew Davis. How are you with spicy food, Drew? It's my... Um, my favorite enemy, my least favorite enemy. Which one? It's my biggest enemy. Biggest enemy. Yeah. Well, me too. I'm not a big spicy guy. I think the hottest wing I've ever had is like B Dub's Honey Barbecue, so yeah. quite mild, and dipped in ranch too. So we're gonna be Ooh, on this journey no -no. together. You don't like ranch? I might dip it in milk, but not ranch. Oh God. <laughs> All right. Well, let's get started. The classic hot. Cheers. Cheers. Here we go. Since you joined MLW in 2016, you quickly developed a very strong fan base by always showing your emotions and wearing your heart on your sleeve. Do you ever feel pressured to constantly put on a show and give the fans more of what initially got their attention? <laughs> it's all natural, man. It's not a show. It's kind of a show. <laughs> but, uh, no, I think, like, I've tried to tame it down a little bit, but in big moments it comes out still. Those Cobras fans are loyal though. Do you have a favorite fan encounter? Dude, I just had one the other day at G when I was working at GNC. This kid came in to buy Prime, obviously, with his dad. As he's leaving, you could tell like he was embarrassed a little bit to ask it mm -hmm. or like say it, but he goes, Go Cobes. And I was like, I just go, I was like, how'd you how'd you know that? He was just like, he just smiled at me and then like walked. And I was like, that was pretty sick. All right, here we go. Fourth question. Do MLW Wiffle Ball players get paid? Okay, so nobody's getting paid a salary. However, I will say that there are a couple ways players can get paid in MLW. First one, we have a players fund where we distribute a certain amount of money to all the guys in the league at the end of the year based on a variety of factors, but a lot of it comes down to just how much they were a help to the league, how much impact they made on the channel, umping at tournaments, and then also jersey sales, um, NIL stuff, so like your Get Norp t-shirt, that's, that's another way um, Jimmy will like receive a royalty on that. Time to bring me my money. <laughs> how far is MLW Wiffle Ball fence? I wanna say it's like something like 80 to center. All I know is it's not far enough, because the fans, they love, they love to say that the fences aren't far enough, so. 79 feet to dead center, 
and 67.5 feet to the to the foul poles. Move them in. So kind of a small park, but we like home runs. Who doesn't like home runs? I want to hit home runs. I want to see home runs. I like home runs. Let's Fans move, like home runs. Let's move the fences in. Let's move them in. Enough with this. Let's move them back. Talk. No, move them in. Let's move them in. Where does MLW Wiffle Ball travel to? Everywhere. A lot of places. We've hosted tournaments in Michigan, Ohio, New York, Massachusetts, Arizona, Texas, Illinois. Running out of fingers. MLW Series, you got Oklahoma, you got Vermont, California with the World Series. We went to Atlanta that one time to shoot TBS thing, so we're kind of all over and it'll kind of change by the gear. Yeah, shout out to Jimmy Rollins, he told me to try some lemon pepper wings in Atlanta and they're <laughs> really good, so. Toss the yo-yo. <laughs> all right, so, um, so this is my, one of my yo-yos. This is my favorite yo-yo. When I was in eighth grade, I got really into yo-yoing. And uh, I, I get really into these hobbies, like these small things like the Rubik's Cube, uh, Wiffle Ball sort of like it, the Balasong butterfly knife flipping also. It's a really fun party trick. Like if, if you meet someone for the first time, you're like, oh yeah, check this out. Whipping it around, like what is that? What is happening right now? Having this is sort of like a phone substitute. This will, will let me know that I got a message and I gotta check it. Or if I have any meetings, appointments, anything like that, this will, will remind me that I gotta go do that. And I'm actually gonna put it on right now, so. Yeah, Apple Watch, love it. Uh, working out, I have my AirPods in. If I'm working in the office, I have my AirPods in. I listen to uh, audiobooks, podcasts, but mainly music with these. Uh, so top three artists going from third to first, third, Cage the Elephant, second, Hans Zimmer, and first, in my opinion, the greatest rock band ever, Pink Floyd. Ready for the next wing? Yeah. All right, let's, let's get it going here. This is a step up, a big step up, a big jump. We're moving faster. We only have three wings compared to the 10 on the typical show done by Sean Evans and First We Feast. <laughs> I'm going back for a dip. Oh my God, respect. So Drew, we have a recurring segment on our show called Explain That Graham, where we do a deep dive on our guests' Instagram and pull interesting pictures that need more context. So bring in the laptop. Kyle. So here we have the first picture, Drew. <laughs> Beauty. <laughs> you on the football field, it looks like. Yeah. Tell us about it. Okay. That was our senior year, and there was there was some rumblings going on around. I heard it through the grapevine that they might they might want me as the third string QB. Mm -hmm. um, humble brag, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, but my tongue hurts so <laughs> I'm bad. I'm talking, so it's not that bad. <laughs> my first weekend playing quarterback ever. I think the hardest part was taking the snap. I mean, people don't realize how hard it is to get a good transfer. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's especially when you're switching centers, you're going under a lot of butts, like <laughs> different butts, and it's just, you never know what you're gonna get. All right, up next we got a photo of you at an MLW tournament, it looks like. This is when you had the John Heater look going, too. <laughs> yeah, that's a good mullet, though. Um, yeah, that's the Pretzel Gang. Um, Explain that, what are you doing there? Their school mascot is one of two school mascots named the Pretzels. In, uh, in America, and so that's the logo. And I was an honorary member of the pretzel game. Like they, they knighted me as a pretzel. They pretzeled me. Final three, here we go. When was MLW Whiffball founded? The fall of 2009 and 2010, I believe in May was when our opening day was shot, and that's when MLW began. Ah, yes, the fall of 2009. What a time to be alive. What were you doing back then in the probably, fall of 2009? Probably playing with Pokemon cards and... <laughs> I'm right there with you. Yeah. Who is the best MLW Wiffle Ball player? How about the back-to-back -back champ? How about the GOAT over there? A lot of rings. How about Ryan Crash, our MVP? A lot of good options. Not a good option, though. Probably not Tommy Coughlin the third, but maybe someday, Tommy Coughlin the fourth. There's a chance. What? <laughs> <laughs> when does MLW Wiffle Ball's new season start? May 5th, opening day 2023 is dropping on the channel. Before that, we of course have our draft video, spring training, our trailer, so a lot of big things, new exciting things coming to the channel. Opening day coming soon. Somebody fire me up. Next up, we got a water bottle. I'm pretty much always drinking water throughout the day. This also sort of just represents physical fitness as that's really, really important to me. And I'm really fortunate to be born with a body that's healthy and a mind that's healthy. And I really intend on keeping them healthy. So um, working out does the job for me and yeah, stay hydrated. 
Again, if you've ever watched me stream, I play chess on stream frequently. Um, you know, just another thing for me to continuously to get better at. If you lose or if you get in a bad position, it's your fault. So you can only be accountable for whatever you're doing. You know, there's you, you can't really get mad at any anything but yourself. So that's one thing I really like about it. I'm sure you guys could see this coming, but this is a wiffle ball. Not only is it just any wiffle ball, this is my 2019 World Series walk-off home run. Wiffle ball has been a very big part of my life since uh, I was 12 years old. It's given me so much, helped me meet so many people, travel around the world, allow me to do something bigger than myself, which, which I'm, I'm very thankful for. This represents perseverance, determination, and grit. I, you know, see this on my desk every day and it sort of just kind of reminds me to, to just hustle and, and don't ever give up and just, uh, you know, keep pushing, keep pushing until you get the result you're, you're wanting to get. So, uh, yeah, this is very important for me. My first communion rosary, probably my most prized possession. It helps me stay humble, helps me stay grounded, um, gives me a direction to go if I ever feel confused. Would, will definitely have this forever. So this is probably my most important item that I have. All right, Drew, it's that time. This is the last dab. We call it the last dab because it's tradition around here to put a little extra on the last wing. That's, you're just going, you're applying directly to the wing. Got it. Right, it doesn't even smell like it's gonna taste good. Like who, who? There's no chance this tastes good. Why do people even do this? What's the point? Just so they can say they do it. What just to say do it. Cheers, Cheers, man. Good luck. All right, Drew, throughout the years, you've accomplished a lot as a player, but the elusive MLW Wooden World Series trophy you still do not have in your trophy case. So I want to know what that would mean for you to bring home to Cobra Nation, to your teammates, and most importantly, yourself. Ah. Uh, that's hot. <laughs> my lips are on fire. Oh my God. I'm not even kidding. Dude, ow. Oh, this is the worst feeling ever. Oh my God. You need more milk, we got more milk. How about I need more milk? Oh! Somebody! Oh! He needs no. some milk! Get some more milk, bro. More milk? How about it? Just take it by the gallon if you need to. Interest <laughs> coming off. She's getting serious. Ah. <laughs> uh. I'd drink a whole bottle of that thing if it meant giving me a World Series. <laughs> <laughs> well, Drew, you did it. You made it to the end. Congratulations. You took on the Hot Ones gauntlet and you conquered. Only thing left to do now is roll out the red carpet for you, my friend. Look into this camera, this camera, or this camera. Let the people know what you got going on in your life. This is the worst thing ever, first off. Um, sorry, playing hockey. No, this is where you should plug oh. MLW opening day coming up and Cobra's first series. <laughs> And that's gonna do it for the video, guys. Hopefully you liked our MLW take on Wired's autocomplete interview. Make sure you keep your eyes out for opening day coming out May 5th. All right, good job, Drew. Yeah. Dude, this like hurts. I'll play with a ball in Antarctica if we get the opportunity.